Well, that was the Trek week that Strike Week was. Yeah. Episode 309 of Trekland Tuesdays Live with me, Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek, coming at you from the heart of Trekland. And boy, has it been busy. Right here from Trekland, from Portal 47, via Trekland Treks, for some sanity, clarity, and the big picture in all things Star Trek. Once again on another Tuesday. Hey, everybody. It's so good to see you back with us yet again on another Tuesday. And we're supposed to be in the fallow times in between current fresh Trek. We've got another, what, three weeks to go until Strange New World Season 2 premieres? Strike what strike? Oh, Meanwhile, if you are new to Trekline Tuesdays Live, welcome, welcome. Glad you found yourself here. Maybe you found yourself here from some of the chatter of some of the crazy stuff that's been going on this last week. Busy week. And if you are new to our channel here today, thank you for coming in. I know not everybody can join us live, and a lot of people are going to see this later. Maybe sometime if you're watching us later, you can join us live here too. Whether you're live or later, make sure to drop a comment in. This is going to be, I, this used to be the kind of thing when you were a kid would send you screaming, running from the room when Uncle Fred and Aunt Martha would drag out their home movies, you know, from the summer and make you sit there and watch Grandma fall off the Grand Canyon five times. No, it's been an insane week, an incredible week. And <laughs> we're just going to plunge into this. Things are happening all the time in Trekline. Rarely have I personally had so many things stack up that was uh, kind of incredible. Got to see a great, our, our guest today on the Trek Files is David C. Fine, the producer of the Restoration Project for the Motion Picture, which made a huge leap forward 20 years ago, I can't believe it, in 2020, 2001, <laughs> a motion picture odyssey, working with Robert Wise and the new team that, you know, the motion picture, the thing you saw these years and made fun of, maybe loved it, but still, eh, it's not the same movie anymore. It was a huge step forward 20 years ago. It's even more so now. It's not just this 4K, oh, we've sharpened it. No, no, no. There's all the, from the ambient noise to the dialogue replacement to the color grading, where it is now not just a gray blue blob that puts you to sleep. The editing is the editing it should have always been, not rushed in, in wet prints to theaters. Well, that's kicked off the week, amazingly, Tuesday night. The day I had. It's been a week since we had our big sixth anniversary show and had a live guest. Strange New World's uh, producer, Bill Wolkoff, number two in the writing room, with us live from the picket lines from the Writers Guild strike a week ago. Do you remember that? If you didn't see last week's show, go back and watch it. The, the edited one is up, so you don't have to watch the whole two-hour version, but just see the meat of it. Friday was the Writers Guild strike Star Trek theme day, which was big. Everybody remembers, or a lot of folks remember the 2007 day when those kind of things were new, kind of driven by social media. Saturday morning, I had the distinct pleasure here of uh, interviewing the great Walter Koenig for the Nichelle Nichols Foundation. Every month they have a panel or a speaker highlight, you know, spotlight. Just some aspect of Nichelle's legacy. I'm very proud to be on the advisory board for the foundation. I finally got to do something this week. We had a great hour. <laughs> we survived the, uh, some of the tech issues, but uh, still, it was an incredible time. I just did it in the frame with Walter. And uh, even so, after all these years, it was great to see folks in the chat have, have hear some new stories. And Walter shared a couple of new things that uh, you can only tell with the, with the passage of time. So that was an amazing morning. That was Saturday morning live. If you were with us then, great. But this is all at the Nichelle Nichols Foundation YouTube channel. I urge you to go back and check that out. And check out several other ones. They've had all just in the short time since the start of the year. There's a monthly Hailing Frequencies open panel. And this was telling stories, but also reflect on, on Nichelle's legacy from Walter's perspective as one of her one of her truly best friends that we found out about. The other thing about this week uh, that I hope you can go back and check out was what happened only yesterday. And I'm just going to show you the one panel from my little end of it, but it was an all day event, the Cisco day. This is something that Ciroc and uh, our friend Ryan over at Seventh Rule and Virtual TrekCon came up with because with all the love fest here recently for the Picard show and TNG, Janeway and the Janeway statue and Janeway on Prodigy and all of that. You know, it was great to see Kira and Quark on Lower Decks and all that, but just so I feel like at the awesome contributions of Avery Brooks and uh, Captain Sisko as a character and DS9 as a show and a series that I think we've all realized 
has come far <laughs> from the days when people complained about that crazy show. I missed one episode and I, I'm lost track. What 20 years of perspective and hindsight has brought to DS9? I mean, as far as all the legacy shows, really. As much as they were revered in their time, some of them, DS9 and Enterprise and Voyager, uh, are seen in a newer light today with a lot more respect. So anyway, this was an awesome day. There, all those panels are up. Oh my God, the lineup of people. I wanted to do a backstage and I wanted to get people that had a lot of longevity with, with Deep Space Nine. They weren't there just a year or two. They could tell some Avery stories and boy, did they. And I don't mean yuck, yuck bloopers. I mean, some really insightful. Well, I don't want to spoil it. You should. It's just an hour. You should watch a panel. It was really, really well Real done. We had Dennis Madelon, the stunt coordinator, who's always good for stories. But people that, as we do in Portal 47, bring these stories that folks that don't get time on a convention stage or get interviewed. Robin Morselli was a seven-year stand-in primarily for Nana's Kira, but also utility. As she was explaining, the stand-ins in Atmo on DS9, they wanted a regular family that the actors and the crew, everybody knew each other and could trust, and not just people coming in as a day job. And they had work they did, even when they weren't standing in or being an extra or even a, an alien head extra. And that's fascinating. And then Lou Race, who was assistant director for the last three seasons of DS9, the first assistant director is alternate because it's a demanding, exhausting job and you have to prep a show and then run it on stage. And he had some incredible stories about Avery, but they all just the backstage vibe, which is what gets missing as much as we love the actors. A lot of that goes missing. And the folks that had to crunch the details, and as Lou said, can't just solder in, take off their sunglasses for a day, and then we'll see you next week. But it's just a, a level of detail that, well, that's what we get into with Portal 47. But here's a public way for people to hear some of these stories, and the, and the crowd loved it. So I urge you to go back and catch us. This is actually at my YouTube, but it'll eventually be connected in with all the uh, Cisco Day, the Cisco Day. Check it out, all the, the uh, native hours that were done at their YouTube channel and at the Seventh Rules YouTube channel. That was an incredible time. That's what's going on. And then even not to have been there, but this last week, some of the cons that are happening. So I am so thrilled that Lock I Long Island Trek Con went off so well. No, it's not San Diego Comic Con, and no, it's not Vegas, but they had a great turnout. Many behind the scenes folks, yes, but it's you know, a fan group behind it. And as long as there's enough business savvy in the group to make sure it's fun in games, but also survives to entertain and convene another day, another year. So hoping that all went well, but all the raves, a lot of the folks I know we're seeing, they're sending back pictures and posting. It looks like it was great. And it's so great for the East Coast fans here in the States to have something a little bit closer than LA and Vegas. Yeah. And something that's Trek focused too, alongside Trek Vegas. That was awesome. I thought today, well, I am just so proud of this. This took off. This is a very serious, it's another day of picketing, but to perk up the spirits of the picketers and to get, yes, get the broad audience attention out there across the country, around the world. They have theme days, and this is something that started in the 2007 strike. There were only three or four of them. The Star Trek one got a lot of attention. I didn't think anything could top that. This was three or four times just bigger on the numbers, the intensity. There's a lot more Star Treks out there. I shot little video bits and wandered and did steals. I was a one-man band this time. And yet we pulled this. I say we. I shot it. And then Scott and Kyle edited this. I'm so proud of it. No, we're not going to watch it now. It's 15 minutes. Go to my YouTube, where you are right now if you're on YouTube. Go and watch this. They blew me away. We kept tweaking it and tweaking it. There are so many names so well and so many names and faces of the new shows. And some of them, you don't know them yet because they worked on the last year of Discovery, which you haven't seen yet. Or they came to second season of Strange New Worlds and you haven't seen it yet. There are so many faces old and new. What I wanted to do to, with you today is there's a lot. There's even some stills slipped in at fun places in this video. I'm just so proud of this. Have I said that? This may be the best video in the 15 years since I first started my blog page, Trekland. What I wanted to sh share with you today actually was some of the, sh most of these are, some, a couple are, but I just wanted to do the photo album. No, I promise it's not our slideshow from the Grand Canyon trip. This is uh, walking up first thing, ABC News 7 here, local LA station was there. There's Terry himself. This is how Terry lives. This is why Terry is so social. <laughs> he was talking and texting, tweeting, whatever. 
you're never going to see anything about major announcements for new new shows until the strike is over and you're watching it so there we have a, we, we have a standard selfie i wish i had selfies from back in the day when he was uh answering the phone and running errands um but still working on a writing career when he was brandon braga's executive assistant on uh well on the last of voyager and enterprise got aaron walkie from uh prodigy with his everybody you saw so many of these signs with his uh, he was a union man quote from o'brien from bar association this is a quickie little little bit that i have on my um instagram and we swing over to well the guy that wrote it robert hewitt wolf from ds9 and this is the vibe of the day all these generations of trek writers and there were other writers who were just picketing because it was their day to picket at paramount but the big bulk of close to 200 people maybe more were trek writers and then yeah a little sparkle from the actors that turned up and a few crew i'll show you but this was a fun moment i mean this is exactly it it was you keep making the point that this is serious business and serious work and that nobody enjoys this strike and it's affecting all kinds of people and not just actors and directors i mean the the secretarial the the assistants and the office staffs of shows that aren't filming right now is uh, a big part of it but these kind of moments and here again here's jennifer murrow who i know from twitter because her year of prodigy is done and you haven't seen her name on anything yet and yeah great sign there but it was a pleasure to see and, you know some of these folks in real time that's what's so insane about the streaming world now they write one year they plan they r d prep a season and then write it and then there's almost no overlap with writing and shooting and then they're not most of the writers are let go as they shoot the end of the season and then we wait a year for it to air so this it's crazy I, I so miss the old days and some I know that nobody misses a crunching 26 episode season except the fans of hit shows. This was awesome to finally put faces today. I got to meet Blue de Barrio and they were awesome. Uh, in fact, this was a spontaneous assortment meetup. This was not planned. A ton of the Discovery writers, which was uh, yeah, kind of wild. There were so many of them. I didn't I had not met three fourths of these people. And of course, some of them were only on the show one year. Discovery, even though it's been canceled, we haven't seen the fifth year yet. And it is still the grand old man for five years. I'm just going to help you out here while you've got a chance. Because part of this was about, you know, finding, I'm going to go to the big picture here, finding uh, faces for names that I never knew. We haven't really met yet. So we've got Blue here, of course. Uh, this is Selena Cipriezo. Cipriaso. She was a writer's assistant on season three, Disco, and a little bit of four. She left to go write on Clarice and now The Cleaning Lady. Uh, so she was a writer's assistant who went on to write, but now she is a full-blown member and uh, she feels her, her Picard association strongly. Um, this is Ari Friedman. She was Michelle Paradis's uh, assistant. Then she became the writer's room assistant on season five. She wrote her first episode during season five as a co-writer with Sean Cochran, <laughs> who's the one person that's not in this photo, but I caught up to him later that I just talked to. Then Carlos Cisco, who I talked to in a video separately. First off, Carlos Captain Cisco, who not only was a writer's assistant, came up the pipeline and managed to be a writer on staff by the last couple of seasons. Uh, we haven't seen some of his work yet. And he was the organizer for the day. Uh, he was a site captain at Disney. And Eric Robbins, who similarly came up the pipeline back here and uh, got on staff the last season, which we haven't seen yet, but had been there. And then Anne Caffell Sanders, who a lot of you have seen, uh, her name popping up anyway. She was on season three and season four. She was another one, the executive producer, co-executive producer then. And this is uh, Glenice Mullins, who was on season three. Had an episode on season season three, and then Kyle Jero, who is a co-executive producer from the last two seasons, and then Terry Hughes, Burton, who I uh, was in my video the other the first time I tried to get out on, online and talk to folks. Met Carlos and Eric then over at Disney. If you saw that video, it was a random loose one. She was on um, season four. She had a couple of scripts there, and then back over here to Kalinda Vasquez. She uh, was on season three. This isn't even the entire Discovery staff. Michelle Paradis was not uh, here at on strike day. A lot of the crew were. And then in the middle of everything, <laughs> no, not a writer, 
But my congressman, Congressman Adam Schiff, who's running for Senate in California, came by, talked to the writers for a moment. I grabbed a, grabbed a selfie with him, as a lot of people did. He spoke for just briefly. You can probably find video up, but he was talking about how he was very much on their side, that we couldn't afford to have another industry hollowed out by the Wall Street profit takers instead of the people who run the business and something that's fair and not letting the changing technologies um, core out, people being able to make a decent living. And he said, this is not just a Hollywood thing in writers and directors. This is emblematic of what's happening across the country. Not only is it what the entire world keeps their sanity by their entertainment, it isn't very important, but it's also as a business and an industry and a, a labor moment. It's exactly what's been happening that's gone wrong in the country at large and how we need to reclaim. I know Katie Porter came by another strike a couple of weeks ago. So you, you may say they're grandstanding for votes or something, but when they, they speak and people know know what side their bread is buttered on, it, it's kind of a moment. Anyway, it was exciting to see. So yeah, Anthony Montgomery, he's in the video, came by. That's the Hageman brothers, Kevin on the left and Dan, that are the head guys on Prodigy. Troll Hunters was their first claim to fame and what got them on Alex Kurtzman's radar. Uh, they were much there all day long. And here's the thing, like all the Prodigy staffs and Lower Decks, they're on the tag, the Animation Guild, who have a union which settled their contract last year, but has historically been behind what writers get, and animation has shifted from three-minute shorts to very respectable primetime shows. A half hour of their show is just as intense as a half hour of a live-action show, and they're gunning to get the tag minimums elevated. They're a fraction of what SAG is. Here's the Benson sisters. Uh, Julian Shana worked on season one of Prodigy. Always a pleasure to see them. And this is Anne Caffell Sanders that was in the big uh, Discovery shot too. So I run into Denise Crosby and she's like, not yet, Larry. I've, I just picked up a role. And I said, oh, let's take it. Let's take the croissant and all. So we took it croissant and all, but it was awesome to see Denise out there. And she's doing a, a podcast now. So look for that. Great moments with Ira Bear. And of course, Armin's there. Armin was on the negotiating committee for years with SAG and was very much a part uh, on Star Trek Day in 07. A lot of folks were working, but there were a lot of actors there. I think you saw some of the photos, but this was a great, a great moment here. <laughs> and then people kept talking about how the Trek folks that knew their heritage were so thrilled in 2007. We actually had two original series folks with us, David Gerald. And Harlan Ellison walked the line. And, you know, we don't have Harlan, but David Gerald was there. And people love to say, David's here for the original series and the animated. I know. And the animated representing the 60s and 70s. And David Sign said, the trouble with Tribbles is no residuals. I think I have Armin's full sign in here, too. And these are the kind of moments that happen. So here's Carlos, Captain Cisco, and Lisa Klink meeting Armin Shimmerman. Lisa, who was a writer on Voyager for several years. I think got to be executive story editor. So Mike Akuda and Armin and, um, you know, we had fans there. They didn't want to publicize it too big, but a lot of fans heard and came over. So it wasn't overrun because it's a narrow sidewalk still. And there are people actually picketing the whole time. But on a special day, you make allowance. So fans taking pictures for them. There's Mike, uh, Armin, and Carlos. So talk about, you know, the generations. Now I had a very fun... Very fun little quickie video here. This is the still version of that. So great Mary Chifo is there. The Klingon Empire supports the strike, obviously. But then she flips the sign and says that in Klingon. And if you haven't seen it, it's it's cute. It's also, we put that in the video, the 15 minute video too. And there you go. That he was a union man line is too good to use. Here's the great Dr. Aaron McDonald, our science advisor. Uh, and an aspiring writer, too. She's working her way up that ladder, just the same way Andre did and the same way that Noreen Shankar did. But it was awesome to see her there in her We Can Do It pose. Here's another angle. I love this, of the gates. This, if you saw the big family photo, this section here, 150, 200 people were crammed into that corner over there. And I was afraid it wasn't going to take at all. It was done on the fly. And Carlos at first said, ah, oh, I'm hurting cats. We'll never get it, make it happen. But then... After another hour, he thought about it and said, well, let's try to do it. And it was awesome. Now, here's Bill Wolkoff, who was our guest last week. My sixth anniversary show came and talked to us live. I had a great sign today, boldly here for each other and a fair deal. So it was good to see Bill in person. We met in person for the first time that day. So that's what an awesome day it was. Here's Armin's full sign. Lucy would be so over you, Paramount. 
she gave you Star Trek. <laughs> and of course, Desi Lou was there. You know, it's the spiritual home Paramount is of Star Trek, not the current home. No current Star Trek is made at Paramount. Uh, no current Star Trek is made in LA now that Picard is done. It's all Toronto. But who knows what the future brings? But yeah, the ancestral home is always good to go back to the family estate. This is Maya Virio. Uh, that's a Croatian name. She's directed on uh, Strange New Worlds and Discovery. She's a director. She was there watching for the DGA. Her agent was the same as some of the writers. Bill Wolf, this is her agent here. And she says, yeah, I'll go over. I'll be sympathetically there uh, in solidarity. Uh, <laughs> this is my friend James Kerwin. A lot of you know him. Worked on Star Trek Continuous. He has a new project coming, Contra Coup. If you haven't seen Yesterday Was a Lie... James is way more than Star Trek, but he's the biggest a geek around. And uh, he came over to one to come over to Star Trek Day and pick it. Section 31 AI, nah, nada. He keeps saying, I wonder why no one's made this connection. I'm walking around and stumble into these folks. Here, that's Jerry, Santiago Cabrera, and Jonathan Del Arco. So awesome to see them out live and uh, doing their thing. You know, again, supporting actors. Here's Sean. And the youngest picketer of the day, his uh, young son, Louie, there. I just had a really good sit down with Sean, my first of the Discovery era, second of the Discovery era. He was there all seven years. Talk about survivors. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of Discovery, who wasn't in the big picture, here's two of them. Second one, uh, it's a Bowie. She's gone on to other things. She worked on even developing Section 31 for a while. Your offer is not logical. Could not resist coming over. Partners with uh, Erica. And I say boy and Erica so much that I'm uh, missing their lesson. So this is an actress. It's Olivia Youngers. She played Ensign Riggs on Picard last season. And there was a little bit of a controversy about after there's the, the destruction at the end of whether she's seen dead or just knocked out. And Memory Alpha has her dead. And she and Terry Metalis, no less, weighed in on Twitter and said, no, she is alive. We did not intend to kill her off. And yet her page reads dead because, you know, <laughs> but Olivia was great. She was, she was she was wearing, you'll see in the video, she's got her Voyager leggings on, her L-cars. But Ensign Riggs is very much alive, we wanted to know. And Gabrielle Stanton and Mark uh, Altman, who have been involved with Star Trek. Gab has a has a bit of a, before her career took off and before Mark's career took off, they have some writing credit, but it was a strike. Good to see them in the line. Again, most of these, Liz Vassy. I had a tiny little crush on her <laughs> when she was first on there. She was the lab, she went on to be in the rain show on CSI all the years as the lab chief there, one of the nerds. And the, the amazing CSI, Star Trek sci-fi convention show. She's a big part of that. Anyway, she was, she's gone on to write and produce and she came back. She wanted to be there for the Star Trek day. She had a part on a next generation. And here you go. You got Jerry O'Connell and Rebecca Romain there. What is he doing? It's not enough to be all over strange new worlds and lower decks. He's got to go pitch to Dan Hegman here. What is this? No, I'm kidding. This is being held up while they're assembling people to go over to, to get into the big family picture. That's a fun close up. If you step back to the wider shot, here's uh, Dan, here's Kevin Eggman, here's Aaron Waltke again, here's uh, Jennifer Miro. So you got a little mini prodigy thing going on here. Those two, aren't they enough of a power couple? And yes, I looked over and ran into these guys showing me off their Enterprise crew caps. I said, what are you doing? Keeping your head down? You're, you don't have to be ashamed of Enterprise. Are you kidding? People love Enterprise. We were laughing. It was like, yeah, they both said, yeah, it's good. So Juan Carlos Fernandez, who was the script coordinator back on the day, who's gone on to work, work came up, at, especially on Scandal. And uh, Chris Black, who was a uh, producer, wrote the original Andorian show for Enterprise, helped develop them, and was there in the middle years of uh, Enterprise. And both very happy to represent Enterprise there in the day. And then here's just a random, this is Andrea from the Discovery staff, Carlos from Discovery, Eric Robbins again from Discovery. Back here, you've got Michael Taylor from Voyager talking to, this is the only one of the pictures I have here of, uh, of Bradley Thompson, who's Dave Weddle's partner from DS9 down here talking. There's Ciroc, yes, and Chase, and Bill Wolkoff again, and Avi, who was uh, a writer's assistant now for Starfleet Academy, who have had their development interrupted by the strike and will be pushed back further now for months. But see, this is like, this kind of mashup is just, this is just amazing. It was this kind of a day. People said, well, 
I look around when we're posing for the picture and there's that Spock guy next to me, Ethan, and somebody I've been following on Twitter, Davey Perez, who has uh, been with Strange New Worlds all three seasons and is still there. And we got to talk for a minute and say, and meet. It was such a great day for meeting people. Uh, this is Glenise Mullins who worked on third season Discovery, only one year. She had one script, you know, in those ma major 12 script episodes or seasons. See, even when you had the intense 26 episode years, people did maybe leave at half season or come in at half season. 13 episode contract for 36, 26. But with the streamers, the sh seasons are so short. You know, one year is stressful and long. <laughs> one year of prepping and writing and filming it, and then you finally see it air, you're on another show sometimes by then. And a lot of folks were on Discovery. It's the five year. We'll see what happens. It's already happening with Strange New. It's already happened with Picard. It's the nature of the beast now, which is a downer, but it's also part of the thing why they're striking because the seasons are so short for them, payment and benefits and all of that. People have to work two and three jobs. I know you say, well, that's not the same as somebody working two jobs you know, a day job and a night job to make ends meet. No, but they've got to get through the year and the way they qualify for their pensions and benefits. They have to have X minute. And none of that infrastructure, those models have adjusted this, the explosion of streaming. And streaming is not this little sliver over here. Streaming is majority of TV now. So that's why you have that, you know, Discovery is the grand old man now of the Star Trek's five, not a sixth, but five years. And we'll see if anybody surpasses it in this model. Anyway, it was nice to chat with Glenn So Al McElroy has been part of Discovery for a long time. And he's been around Hollywood a long time. You can see there, sporting a little veteran's mark. And he, original series fan, you'll, you'll enjoy our little brief conversation. He told me his three favorite original series episodes as a kid, still, and then had to throw in a fourth. But great to meet him as seeing him as a name all these years. Uh, and here's Avi again, the writer. Had a great sign, Workers of the World Unite. You have nothing to lose but your chains, Karl Marx. And oh, by the way, as requoted by Rom. <laughs> okay, just some, you know, the public support has been so great. Check it out. I've got it in the video. There is a, we talked about it with Carlos and Eric and Terry. There's a community support fund for all the writers, assistants, and office staff, and just stage people who aren't covered by a union to help them out. There's a community support fund. You, if you feel like donating to, or if you're in the middle of the country, nowhere near New York or LA to actually go physically pick it. And you want to help, you know, five, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. If you, if you feel like you want to help out somehow, you can do that. At the same time, you see all kinds of bakeries and store shops and, you know, drink shops, pizzas, burgers, sandwich shops, sending over food for the picketers that sometimes you would see it. It's in the video too. I tried to get. Uh, Jennifer Murrow was talking about the public support and she was talking about the cars honking as they drove by, but also just the food and the waters and the ice cream and the shaved ice. And it's, it's amazing. The public support has been incredible and somebody baked, yes, WGA cookies. I got a couple of them. They were excellent. And I wanted to show you, I was, I dug out, I found my 2007 strike shirt and you see the front all the time. It's, you know, it's the good of the many over the needs of the one or the few the needs of the many as in the union and individual, individual corporates making 200 million a piece. Uh, but the backside has LLAP, the, the Vulcan sign and uh, Trekkies support the WGA from December, 2007 on the back. So I just want to throw that in just in case, just so you would know. And David Goodman, who missed the main part of the old, David's past president of the WGA. He's gone on beyond writing um, North Star and being the comedy guy from Futurama's episode coming on to Enterprise. As you know, he's had quite a career over at um, Family Guy and most recently with on the Orville with Seth. So, but his, the last few years, he was president during the big, big, it wasn't as big in public as the strike here for the rest of the country, but a big reform in the way agents packaged writers and took away income and anyway, they totally reformed something that had grown over the last few years and, and basically gave power back, earning capacity and power back to the writers, not their agents, which was a big thing to get accomplished. And he's still involved in the leadership team and is running around. You can follow his streams to his channels, Instagram and his Twitter, and see what he's been up with and who he's picketing with today. A lot of you have seen this out and about. I'm, I'm back here. You'll see that in the video. And as usual, 
the actors are all the actors there are all down front but not that what's sad is this area here it is so dense and it's on one level at least we had the level here you know we people could kneel and then stand and then rise up i feel badly because all these folks over in here you they're lost so in the video where, where i'm standing in the back back here I tried to give you some depth and let you see who's, but it really is. It's not so much a where's Waldo. It's where's Waldo one, where's Waldo two, where's Waldo three. <laughs> who's that Waldo? Which Waldo is that? And I was just glad that we got to preserve all this. Now, a lot of people, I'm going to wrap it up here. A lot of people uh, see this and they went, oh, look, someone came in costume. Someone came in uniform. Yay, lower decks, lower decks. Well, it's not just a fan there. It turns out that this is uh, John Mendoza, big Star Trek fan. He goes on the cruise. He's in L.A. and he works in the Writers Guild office. So I got to tell him, thank you very much. Our little $12 check that comes every quarter for, <laughs> for Voyager, whatever it is, $12, $9, 16 on a good time. It's always been like clockwork for for both of us, we each get a separate check. That the office has been great and congratulations. And uh, so he's at the WGA, but he was there because he was a Trek fan and wanted to be supportive. So when you see that guy at the side, that was uh, that was John. So uh, I can go back to this. This was, um, again, watch the video. There's a lot of individual moments when we're talking to folks. Most everybody you at least had a steal here, but a lot of some others weren't. And a lot of folks that I wanted to show you my little slideshow here. Hope I didn't put anybody to sleep. Hope we didn't uh, do a snoozerama there, but uh, just an incredible day. And it got tiring after a while, especially the people I knew well. We all had to say, this has just been amazing. This minute. And a lot of the, not so much younger, but newer Trek folks and the younger ones too. Everybody has their perspective. Some of those were, you know, office assistants that were planning on they have a mentor on the staff and they're wanting to one year do that and then maybe pitch a story and sell a script or, or co-write one and then get on staff later on. And, you know, so many of them were Trek fans to begin with, and you'll hear that. So it's a dream come true for them to be writing on um, the revival of Trek. And so many of them on staff or not, they're like Aaron and Robert Wolf, like Carlos was <laughs> put the thing together. I think he's like a lot of con throwers in the old days. He put the con together just so he could meet all those people. And of course it was awesome to meet actors and talk with them, but writers were having a field day, you know, meeting Ira and meeting Wolfie and meeting David Gerald and meeting so many. Uh, Brandon was there earlier. I miss Scott Bakula. Scott was there, Mr. Early Bird Marathon Runner. He was there the first hour and I missed him. I briefly saw Brandon. So there were, you know, a lot of folks there. It was just an incredible day. I hope we can transfer some of that out. The fact that it was the Friday before, I mean, a, a really fun panel to do with, a virtual panel to do with Walter. The fact that it was the Friday before the Cisco Day events of Monday that I had a sliver of. And yeah, the fact that I had a Will Rogers Day out at the park. Yeah, it's been just a wild, wild last few days here. For me personally, for Trekland, but that strike day was just incredible. And uh, long after, I mean, I hope I get, we get this damn strike settled. Because, you know, the directors are negotiating right now. And the actors will start negotiating in June. All three of the, the writers are always like, when there's a major issue, sometimes it's a thing for the writers and it doesn't, it's not really on the radar. It's not of importance to the directors and actors. They'll be in sympathy. But unless, I mean, there's very few times something that's in the interest of a writer is not in the interest of anybody else. This time, it's in the interest, because we're talking about, again, it's a paradigm shift. What streaming, not streaming so much, but the short seasons. And yeah, the streaming model has done. You totally took away the old network commercials, airtime, Nielsen ratings model, and we've gone to this. And just the fact that there's not the transparency, right? We talk about that every week with the ratings, with the parrot ratings, not Nielsen's. Although, yes, there's Nielsen's now trying to measure streaming, but it's not the same, Captain. It's not the same. So the same things we, that, that percolate up in other ways are right at the heart of these issues. I mean, people love to get freaked out about AI. And in whatever incremental on the spectrum part that could take away work from writers and actors, obviously, they want to put that genie back in the bottle, that toothpaste back in the tube before any more gets out, no matter what state it's in right now. Because before you know it, in the blink of an eye, it'll explode, take off. And then you're looking at it, 
from the tail end <laughs> or the front end, the front end of that bazooka, not the back end. But it's a lot about a lot more than AI. And uh, uh, they've got a basically the system that's existed for 30 years, ever since Lucy and Desi came up with reruns. It's a totally new thing. So this is a paradigm shift that's affecting everybody, directors and actors, and the IATSE crews, even, the way they work. And the, the Teamsters are all hugely... Teamsters have been blocking gates. They see two picketers at some town where there are Atlanta or whatever, Seattle, Vancouver. If they see two picketers picketing a studio gate, they will not cross for the most part. And, you know, every town is not LA and New York. So that's been a, a huge thing, but that's that's how this is not just your old, we're arguing over numbers kind of a strike. Okay. You heard me talk about this before you've seen it talk. If you're following any of the creatives and many of the actors, Instagrams and Twitters, especially in Facebook, uh, you'll know and you'll see, you'll see what's going on. I am so proud of that video. I hope you all go over and watch it. I hope everyone, if you haven't already, will go like and subscribe on my channel, um, YouTube. I'm going to be doing more and more lives direct to YouTube. So you want to ding the bell. It won't always just be Tuesday here. I'm going to intend because the YouTube metrics are what I'm, I should be building up on. So just fair warning, fair warning. I'm not going to shut down everybody else. The Cisco Day panel was uh, was straight, well, restreamed to YouTube only. I didn't do the side channels. The other day at the strike, I didn't do a, a live video at the strike, if you'll notice. I did, so we had better camera quality. I did do a live broadcast on YouTube direct. Nothing else, but just YouTube. So if you had your alert set, you missed it. And Jonathan Fernandez, who was a season one writer on Enterprise, who I had never met, walked by, recognized me, and said, hey, Larry, and there's a we have a brief conversation on that live segment straight to YouTube. You never know. Uh, but what I do want to say, thank you for all of this. And in a way, again, thank you so much to our Patreons, our TTLers, uh, Diana Hopkins, Robin Wilson, Lawrence Todd, and marie Siegel, Justin Porteous, Galinda Bruton, Chris Jiggins, Pranakasha Productions, Comedy Forecast, and our newest, and Andrew Jasimski, and of course our Live Wires, Robert McLean, Byron Bailey, J.R. Poole, Halbjorn Gunn Johnson, Alan Hoensey, David Gregory, Tobias Rex, Donna S. Runyon, and Casey Shafsky. Thank you all so much. If you want to help our little burgeoning media empire here, the video side of Trekland, you can help out with Patreon. It's going to take me a while. With $5 and $10 levels, that may take a while. But I'm keeping it simple on purpose uh, for folks who want to help out donate at this level. Thank you so much. I need to update the uh, the Portal 47 archival interviews selection for the uh, TTLers. But everybody, five and ten bucks gets a shout out like this. Patreon.com slash Trekland Live. Thank you all so much. And hey, it is getting to be summer. It's going to be warm weather. Uh, striking or not. And if you come now, we might even see a striking line. But if you're in L.A., business or pleasure... You got a spare day, come take a Trekline Trek with me. What is that you say? It's your own custom designed away mission to one of the location sites that, you know, from any of the areas of uh, the eras, I should say too, of LA based Star Trek, which used to be all of it. So, no, no, nothing from Discovery or Strange New. Starfleet Academy is not out yet, but. Picard and then all the older series have location sites to go visit. Some are iconic, right? Some are obscure. I will help you with it. We'll do it. We'll have a quick lunch in the day. I will pick up your hotel and back. Trucklandtrex.com would love to do. I'm gonna be, I've got to announce this, but we're gonna if you're in town for Comic-Con San Diego in July, I'm gonna offer an, as I did with the cruisers. I'll do a pre-arranged, slightly less expensive. Uh, group designed tour to the basics. Uh, but if you want your, that'll be like the day before and the day after, give it a day to travel, San Diego, LA. But if you're hanging around SoCal for a day or two at either side of San Diego Comic-Con in late July, uh, give me a buzz and keep watching. We may do another special group, you know, in the van. Otherwise, feel free anytime, any time of the year, We'll do a custom one just for you, a Trekline Trek, okay? Just reach out and get a hold of me. Go to the site. Go to my home site and, and check it out. 
But that to say, it's a Tuesday. There's another Trek Files up. It's an awesome one. We've got David Fine back, who, who was the producer, head producer of the team doing, um, along with Darren Docterman and Mike Medicino, the ones that first worked with Robert Wise to reboot the motion picture and make it the movie that it was intended to be, the one we've lovingly made fun of for all these decades, is not the movie it was supposed to be and is not the movie it is now. And now the 4K edition has even amped that up. Have you seen it? And if you see it, see it on the largest screen you can. Folks would love to see this in theaters besides these one-off screenings. If you're in LA and you're you know, New York and you're lucky enough to see it, they want the world to see it on the big screen again. It is not the movie you've made fun of all these years. And if you loved it, you will love it so much more. David's our guest on The Trek Files this week um, with an amazing article from 1980 you too can create your own bridge monitor. Those wacky little oval oval monitor things from the bridge that had their own saga. They were so loud because they were all individual, you know, all of that. Um, Jesko von Putkammer, the science advisor, wrote basic code on his Trash 80 Radio Shack computer. And it's reproduced in this magazine, this computer magazine. And anyway, it's amazing. You need to see the Trek Files this week, folks, and get the document for sure at our Facebook page. Um, it's just, it was just too much fun. Too much fun this week. It was a perfect hiatus topic. Uh, there's been some developments with the 4K. It's been tweaked even more for uh, for Dolby and Atmos Sound. And it was it was just incredible. Most of all, and if you're leaving us now, because you're watching later, uh, it's at Larry Nemechek is where I am. Find me anytime, at Larry Nemechek on Twitter and Mastodon. Larry Nemechek's Trekland on Facebook. Instagram is cool too right now for me. And yeah, YouTube and Portal47.net. If you're going to jump in with us deep diving, you just might as well get in. If you saw or if you go to see the uh, Cisco Day panel that I led with, Lou Race and Dennis Madalone and Robin Morselli. That is exactly what we do every month in Portal 47 on Guest Night. And it's exactly the same kind of attitude I bring to everything. Uh, if you think this is a deep dive every week, oh boy, as they used to say. Um, well, that's going to do it for us for now. But if you're watching us later, I hope you can jump in with us sometime live. It's at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. 4 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. UK time, 10 p.m. Central Europe. I love it when we have the global folks show up. It's the next morning in Australia and East Asia. Love for you to be able to do that with us sometime. Until then, till next time we meet, and the way things are going these days, who knows where that might be, although I am looking forward to SoonerCon at the end of June. Um, yeah, until we meet again next Tuesday or otherwise, or watching all the great assembly of content the whole day of cisco day the cisco day not just my hour hey until then stay healthy do all the things stay woke check your sources and uh truck well everybody <laughs>